Welcome to Obsidian TTRPGTutorials.com. Let's learn how to use the tool. G'day guys and welcome back tonight to another Obsidian video. Tonight we're going to dive into a plugin that we've already looked at previously, um, but some community members reached out and said, hey, this, uh, this video is pretty out of date these days. Can we have another look? So let's dive in and have a look at Fantasy Stat Blocks. Now this is a plugin that's been around since Obsidian really started to become popular. It's one of the first TTRPG plugins I think that came out. Um, and you can see here what it does. It's basically for creating stat blocks inside of your notes. You can see here I've got pictures of my monsters. I've got all of the details that the stat blocks should have. Um, but one of the things that I think really makes this stand out from other sort of applications that I've seen stat blocks support is the fact that you can have linked stat blocks. Right, if you've got spells on your stat blocks, those spells can be linked, okay, to the notes that tell you what those spells do. And as you can see, that is amazingly useful for running your games. Um, I use it for pretty much everything. Um, I run all my combat out of here. Here's a, a more advanced example. And you can see here, this is where we have some spells. All right. Um, and it also has initiative tracking support. Now, that's not part of the Fantasy Stat Blocks plugin. That's actually part of the initiative tracking plugin, but it adds these buttons here. And you can see here that we can add these monsters into combat. It rolls and all that sort of stuff. We're not going to go through that in this video, but what we are going to do is show you how to install the Fantasy Stat Blocks plugin and get started with using it. All right, so let's jump in and have a look. Okay, so we've got the plugin installed, we've got the plugin enabled, we've got the options button available. We're going to go ahead and click that. All right, now it's always good to understand the options of a plugin before you use it, but there are some things that I recommend here. Now, integrate Dice Roller, up to you if you use it. All right, the Dice Roller plugin is additional. You can just install that through the plugin market and that will support uh, or provide Dice Rolling support into this plugin as well. I personally don't use it, but I still have it enabled in case I need to use it. Um, try to render wiki links. This is one I really do recommend you enable. All right, because what this means is that if you've got like a spell or an ability that's linked inside of your stat block, this is what enables that link to work. So turn that on. Uh, disable 5e SRD. If you're playing 5e, you can leave it enabled. If you're not, you can disable it up to you. Um, but here is where we start to get important. So note passing, and you'll see here, pass front matter from creatures. What that basically means, is it's gonna scan your vault, scan all of your notes and find the ones that have monsters. And it's gonna use that to actually feed monsters into the plugin. Now, back in the day, um, when we first started using this plugin, we used to load monsters into the plugin. All right, if I come down here to import homebrew creatures, you'll see there's a section in here on importing data from some other common tools that you may have heard of. Um, that's what we used to use, and I, I certainly used to recommend that. And what that does, just so that you're fully aware, and I'll bring open my screen here on the other side, um, is that basically opens up... No, it doesn't open anything, sorry. It saves them into this, so into your vault, into the .obsidian folder. All right, which is a hidden folder. You might need to enable hidden folders in order to see that in plugins. And then if you come down here, you will find Obsidian 5e, 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 there it is, Obsidian 5e stat blocks. Now, when the plugin first came out, it was designed for 5e, right? Javelin played 5e and he made this for his own games. So therefore the, the plugin was originally called 5e stat blocks. A lot's changed since then. Um, and the plugin is now very, very system um, neutral, right? You can use it for pretty much anything you can code into it. Um, but the name hasn't changed. The reason the name hasn't changed is because if he did change the name, he would have to actually get the plugin reassessed by Obsidian and relaunched. Okay, so that's why that hasn't changed. Don't be afraid. But in here, you can see the data.json file. Now, back in the day, we used to come in here to Obsidian and we would load JSON files through here. And what that would do is that would save that data into the data.json file in here. And that's where all your monsters would be stored. Now that process does work and it's pretty stable, but I have had some issues in the past where my data.json file has reset. I've lost all my monsters. And so therefore I come along to play my game and none of my links work. My initiative tracker doesn't work. And I'm like, oh no, what have I done? What do I do? And it's just because there was a corruption issue and the data just resets. Um, you can see I've taken copies. All right, so it's always a good idea to take backups of these things. Um, personally, I also back this data up to GitHub. Um, so that, that way, if I did lose something, I could just download my latest copy and away I go. So I found ways around this, 
But what I'm saying is I don't trust this method as much as I trust the note method. All right, and what do I mean by note method? All right, so in here we've got the, the option to pass front matter for creatures. What it's doing, as I said earlier, is it's scanning those notes, it's finding notes that contain monsters, and then it's just using those to feed the plugin. All right, and what that means is there's no risk of that data.json file getting corrupted and resetting, all right, because it's saved in your notes. Um, it's a much safer way to have it, in my opinion. It does come with some complexities because the, the, you do need time for your monsters to pass and be recognized by the plugin, but ultimately I think it's a lot safer. Now, what I've also done here is I've come in and I've added my bestiary folders, all right? You can just come in here and you can type the name of your folders, starting from the, the parent level, all right? So two dash mechanics for me, we can have a look over here actually, just so you can see this. Go up to there. All right, two dash mechanics. And then I've got my monsters in CLI beast daring. All right, so what I do is I come into this plugin and I come in here and I type two dash mechanics. All right, because that's the root folder underneath my parent um, slash CLI slash beast All right, and I add that folder down here. And if I've got any other folders where I'm storing monsters, all right, you'll see I've got the CLI beast area plus an extra beast area folder. I, I tell this plugin where those folders are where I'm storing monsters. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is for efficiency, query efficiency specifically, right? When this tool is checking my vault, scanning my vault and passing those notes in, it's quicker for it to know exactly where to look than it is for it just to go search the whole vault. Now you can do whatever you like, but if you do have just the standard dash here like this, what that's saying is scan my whole vault, all right? And that can take quite a bit of time if you've got lots of notes. So I tell it specifically where to look and that will make your query a lot more efficient when it runs. All right, now if we come down here, we'll see layouts. By default, it comes with a basic 5e layout, but as you can see, there's some other options here. Anything with basic in the name has come with the plugin. All right, so you can activate these and you can have a look. Um, let's just actually open one up or we'll open up a Pathfinder and show you a, an alternative, right? Um, we just showed you the Vampire the Masquerade as an option is on the other screen. Uh, so that's certainly one that you can have a look for, uh, but this is going to be a Pathfinder second edition one. Um, here we go. Oh, there we go. I don't even have to go and find it. Um, so we've got Pathfinder. Let's just drag this in here, actually. There we go. All right, so you can see Pathfinder's got a, a pretty different look and feel. Um, it's matching the Pathfinder second edition sort of layout as closely as it can. It's got the action items here. And again, we've got links to all of the spell abilities and stuff going on. So it makes it much easier to learn how to play Pathfinder second edition. If you're a dungeon master looking for a new system, wanting to get away for 5e, like have a look at this system because Obsidian can make it easier for you to play it. But there you go. There's other, obviously, stat blocks, layouts available for you in this tool to use. So select the one that you need. Um, and just know also that if there isn't one here, right, that you like, you can make your own. All right, there's a full layout here. If we click edit, just as an example, you can actually see there's a layout editor, right? Where you can drag these things around and you can change where they are. You can add different things to them. You can see what they what the colors are. All right, you can set some advanced regex stuff. Don't mess with that. Uh, but then you can come in here to a preview and you can obviously like, you can have a look and see what it looks like. Fantastic little addition to the tool these days. All right, so just be aware that that's there. Set the layout to whatever you want. Um, we won't go through that in this video, right? We can go pretty pretty far down that tree on how to make custom layouts, but that's a whole different thing. Now, what this means is I don't use this section anymore. All right, I don't have a need for it. All right, it's, it's good. I, I could use it and it still works, but I just find I don't need it. And then down here, you'll see all the creatures that are loaded. Um, so you'll see here that I have 484 homebrew creatures loaded and it's displaying 100 all right so there's lots of options here now if we go back let's just have a look and show you what i mean by have your monsters in a note okay so here we have a note that i've got in my vault for the amethyst great worm all right if we come down here we'll see the stat block okay um if we actually 
go into, I'm using live preview mode these days, but go into live preview mode and have a look here. You can see that all of this text in this code block is actually a stat block code block. All right, and by that I mean the back ticks. So three back ticks stat block says to the note, this is the start of a stat block. And at the bottom, there's three back ticks to say this is the end of a stat block. Now, you might be looking at this going, oh, that's a lot of code to put in, all right? But there are ways for us to do that automatically. We'll follow that up in a bit. But just be aware that this is how this can work, right? You, you store your monster in the note. You have all of the syntax for that monster. Um, and it's, it's relatively readable, if I'm completely honest. Like I can see this is the name of the spell section, this is the description, and then below here I've got some different spells and things are added. Like it's relatively easy enough for me to add. Now, there's one other element that is really important with a monster that is stored in a note. And if we go up to the properties, we can see here that stat block inline exists. Stat block inline basically says within this note, there is a monster, all right? So this is helping tell the tool to watch this note. So go ahead and make sure that any monsters that you create have a stop block, stat block inline. Now you're probably saying to yourself, well, how am I gonna create monster manuals and all that sort of thing? All right, so what we're gonna do just very quickly is just take into consideration where to look. All right, so if we go to obsidian, ttrpgtutorials.com, all right, come along here to Community Supported Games and have a look at the games that are listed, all right? These are the sort of systems that the, the community has made stuff for. Now, Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, obviously, is the, the behemoth in the room, right? Everyone plays or has played or, you know, there's so many, so many millions of players. Um, you can come in here and you can read through this on how to get the content that you're after, all right? I highly recommend you have a look at this import using TTRPG Convert CLI. All right, this tool is designed to get the content that you own into Obsidian using the required format. Um, the default templates that this process uses does not create fantasy stat blocks, but there is an optional stat block template that you can use when you're running that tool in order to make monsters that will feed directly into this, um, this plugin. All right, so if you're playing 5th edition, come directly to here. Don't bother using the JSON CSV importers anymore. I wouldn't even bother with importing from your D&D uh, Beyond content. It is far easier to use the CLI tool. Um, it is a bit complex, right? It's a command line tool, so you're using DOS. Um, for those who want to go back, it's probably not even DOS anymore, but it's, it's, it's using the command line, right? It's going back to those days. Now, beyond that, we have Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Uh, we have Pathfinder 2E, the original uh, notes available if you go into there. And Pathfinder 2E Remaster, we have the notes available there as well. Uh, or the monsters, sorry. Um, the approach I'm using these days is this PF2E Remaster with the stars on it. This method does require you to own a copy of Foundry. All right, but once you've got the content in Foundry, you can export it from Foundry to Obsidian using the approach uh, listed here. Um, this method here is probably easier but less complete. All right, so if you just want a copy of the remaster notes but you don't have Foundry, you can use that option. Now, I will say this, all right, the reason why I've recommended the Foundry method, because it's what, 50, 60 bucks for a license once off purchase, is so that you can get any content that you have for Pathfinder. All right, in Foundry, you can get into Markdown and put into Obsidian. What that means effectively, Pathfinder have this really cool license that says almost everything is released under a community policy. All right, so if we've put it in a rule book, you can use it. All right, all of those monsters are freely available. But if we've put it in an adventure, or we've put it in a, um, a, a splat book for something like a, um, a world book, all right, you're not allowed to use it. All right. That's the problem with, um, I think, this second line here, is it's only got the generic stuff in there, where what you'll find when you're going through Pathfinder Adventures and stuff is you might commonly find named NPCs with slightly modified tweaks on their stat blocks, and you know it might be a harder version of a stat block or an elite, or it might be a weak version. This version here will allow you to get the stat blocks from those adventures out, all right? As long as you have a copy of that in, in Foundry. And what I really like about PF2E is they sell the modules officially for Foundry so you can buy that content and then export it. But also there are tools to um, suck up your uh, official 
Paizo PDFs, right, which you can purchase from the Paizo.com site and import into Foundry and then export that into Obsidian as well. All right, so just to call out that that exists. Now, for other games, things are not as easy. All right, I'll be completely open and honest with you. It really depends on how big the community is as to how easy it is for you to find stat blocks for your games. Uh, but I do recommend you start off on this page and you have a look and see if your games exist. If they're not here, you can have a look at our GitHub repo site. But I will say this, right? We are only hosting what we're legally allowed to host. Okay, so we will not host uh, monsters for half of these systems where we're not legally allowed to do so, all right? Some games like Paizo, all right, some, some developers, they have fantastic community policies that let us use everything. Um, some like Dun Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, they only have a, a small selection of stuff under the, the SRD. And then there's some other ones down here that just don't allow you to use anything, all right? There's some games that just say, nope, you purchase our content in a book form or in a PDF form, and that's all we offer, and that's all you're allowed to put on the internet. Okay, so just be aware there's different licensing rules for different games and we're trying to adhere to all of that and make sure that we're legit and doing the right thing. Um, so just, you might have to do some research. Um, we can probably do a whole other video series on how to find data and get data into the right format, but I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Like I pick Pathfinder 2E as my primary system for a reason. The data exists, the community is huge, it's already there and I love that. Whereas I was go play, let's say World Without Numbers, chances are I'm not gonna find that level of data and really clean support. So just a heads up, that's what you do. If you're playing fifth edition, run the CLI process and you will literally be dragging folders into your vault, all right? This is the CLI process here. I've dragged this folder into my vault and I now have all those notes, all right? That's pretty much it. When I do drag those folders into my vault, one thing I do need to do sometimes is come up here to the command palette. I type fantasy stat blocks and I click pass front matter for creatures. And what this does, if I press control shift I, it actually triggers down here, passing uh, front matter passing complete. All right, so you can see it started and it finished. It's checked all of my notes. It did it really efficiently because remember I told the plugin where my monsters are. Um, and it's done, all right? Um, sometimes though, if you've just dropped 15,000 new notes into your vault, that can take 20 minutes, all right? And you might need to just put it down, walk away, get a coffee, come back once the passing is complete. Um, sometimes when you load these things, you just get like the name and some lines and no content in between. That's generally an indication that the passing has had a problem um, and that it's not working. Now, for Pathfinder 2nd Edition, it's very much the same. You drop the stuff into your vault and away you go. Um, just a heads up, if you are playing another system and you don't have the option to, to make your notes, obviously these systems here are um, available and it's possible for you to import using that. But for the most part, these are all 5 edition apps anyway. All right. Um, so it's really only good for D&D 5e in most cases. Not all cases, but most cases. So just be aware of that. Um, it can be harder to get other monsters in here. Now, just to throw an idea into your head, um, if you are playing a remote system, you can actually train chat, chat GPT to convert monsters into the stats uh, that you need. Like I've quite commonly copied this sort of thing to chat GPT and said, hey chat GPT, this is my monster template. Can you please analyze this and learn it. And what we're going to do is I'm going to give you another monster that I paste from a PDF, let's say, into the chat GPT. And I say, hey, can you please convert this into my stat block? And it does a relatively okay job. I will say be careful because it doesn't always do a perfect job. And it's not perfect straight away. Like you've got to sort of coach and train your bot sometimes to get it to do what you need. Um, but it's a very useful method to actually get your data from a PDF into this application. Um, but anyway, once we're there, we've got the stat blocks in line, we've got the stat block in here, um, and obviously we can now come into reading view and we can see the stat block. Everything's working lovely. Like that is what fantasy stat blocks for is for. Uh, fantastic tool. But next, let's go through and learn how to add these into other notes. Now we've got our monster. It's in a note for that monster. It's obviously named according to the monster. Um, and now we want to add that monster to a note. What do we do? Well, we obviously we have to have a note. Um, I'm going to use one that I've already prepared earlier. 
So here you can see I've got my map on the side using the Obsidian Leaflet plugin. Um, and I've got some pinned rooms and this is where my party ended up last night, it was in this fantastic room here. If I click the pin, I open up the room and this is where I want to add an encounter or a monster, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to press uh, turn reading view off so I can go into live preview mode. And here I'm going to press Alt T, which is the trigger for opening up a template in my vault. All right, and I'm going to type in monster. I'm going to use the insert monster TTRPG stat block. Now, if you're using my Patreon vault, you will have access to these templates already. They're included. Um, if you're not, I'll walk you through in a second how to create this. Um, but you can see here, pressing enter adds that little bit of text to here. And in live preview mode, all we have to do is click out of that section there and that then converts into a stat block. Now that's simple, right? You can go through and add as many stat blocks as you want to your notes. And what you can do is you can change the name of the monster, all right, to bring up the stat block for that monster. How easy is that? Now, what it also has in here, um, if we come over and have a look at maybe some other monsters, um, let's say we wanted to add a different one. You can actually come in here and press back and let's go, can we add an albino death weasel from the uh, creature codex? Yes, I can. All right, because I've got that in my vault. You can see I've got the stat blocks now. It's fully linked and off it goes. So the plugin has functionality built into it for actually searching for the monsters from this point. And you can just come in here and, you know, uh, what if we type with an exec, an X, you know, it brings up all the X options. All right, so off we go. Absolutely useful. Um, what happens if we want to type in goblin and actually use a variation on a goblin? Uh, it brings them up. Like you can see here, I'm using the CLI tool to create multiple monster books. I've done that previously. And what that does is that adds a dash and then source. So there is some different ones there. Oh, there's a good learning experience. You see that what just happened there? I was going for Goblin MPMM and it converted that to having all this stuff around it. Now, what is that? That is the uh, various complements plugin that I use to enable automatic linking, all right? If I type Allosaurus, you can see that it starts to come up and it recommends it and I can create a link. All right, that's what that does. All right, that's the various compliments plugin. When you're using the initiative, oh, sorry, the fantasy stat block plugin, sometimes various plugins tries to get in here and do its thing. And it's just a little bit annoying. So just a heads up, if you see that happening like that, see how that changed? All right, from that to, it's not gonna do it now. It's not gonna do it. But yeah, if it changes from that view to with the view to the icons, that's actually various compliments, um, you know, triggering in. Now, I do have various compliments installed in the Patreon vault as well. So just a heads up. If that happens though, you just have to remove all the, the noise around it. So all of the, the um, uh, blocks, right? The code blocks um, and the square brackets, right? Just delete it all and just have the name of the monster so that it just has the name of the monster. All right, and then that will then come through and convert. So that's how you add a monster to your notes. Pretty easy, right? Um, and the thing I like about that is that then you've got linked spells in front of you. You can basically, you know, it makes it very easy to run the monster at the table in my experience. Now, but you're not using my Patreon vault, are you, right? Um, so how do you do that? Let's just quickly point out that if we go to settings and core plugins, there's actually a plugin down here called templates. I think it's enabled by default, but it might not be um, on a new vault. I don't think it is actually. You need to come into the cog of that once it's enabled and you need to set a folder where your templates exist. All right, I recommend you create Z underscore templates. The Z just means that that template folder goes to the very bottom of the sort order in your vault. And then in that vault, what I've got is different folders for different things. But in Markdown, I've made some combat templates. All right, and you can see here that I've got an insert monster TTRPG stat block, and literally it is just a copy of the text that I inserted into my note. All right, all a template does is when you trigger it with, I use Alt-T, you type the name of the thing, it just literally puts that text into your note. That's all it does. So pro tip, make sure it's on a new line when you do it, because otherwise you just do what I did. Now, the, first, the other thing to do to set up template is just to go into hotkeys, 
type in template and just make sure that you know what the uh, the key for that is. Now, Alt E, open insert template model is what I'm currently using to insert my templates. Is it? Templater, templates, templates, Alt T, sorry. Alt T is the one. Templates, insert template. Templater is a more advanced template plugin. So just be aware of that. Uh, that's not for this video. That goes much deeper down the rabbit hole. Uh, but that's all it is. All right. So you've basically got a, a note in your template folder with the code that you want to do. All right. And where do you get that code? If we go back to the actual community plugins and have a look at um, fantasy stat blocks, all right, we can actually come through and read the readme. Remember at the start, I said read the readme, and you can actually find this code here provided for you. There's also a more advanced option here, all right, which is a custom stat block. And that's really cool as well, because if we go back in here and we have a look at, oh, here we go, insert custom monster. I've actually got that as a template as well. All right, and you can see here that's just literally a copy and paste from the plugin documentation. But this is cool because it means I can now create a custom monster in my notes. All right, so let's watch this. If I go to here, I'll go back to my room. Why is it always, is that 19? Yeah, it's going to the right space. It's just not quite getting there. Um, if I go here, insert Alt T, I'm going to go monster. I'm going to insert custom monster TTRPG stat block. All right, that puts that in the note. And then I can start coming down here and my monster. All right, I can change the text, my monster. All right, this is all text driven. Okay, so you can change the AC to 50, you can change the HP to 250, you can give it stats, all right? And it will go through and it will add all of that in and it will start doing your calculations and present it for you. Um, you can also do things like coming down here in the description and going uh, square bracket, square bracket, fireball, square bracket, square bracket. Did I just break something? No, there we go. All right, and that adds the fireball link. All right, so that's just plain markdown what I did then, right? In Obsidian, to do a link, you do square bracket, square bracket, note name, closing square bracket, closing square bracket, and that creates a link. So using this, you can quickly make your own notes. Just wanted to do a cheeky edit here and just speak to where I would put my monsters if I was making custom monsters. All right, because it's not just a case of like how you make it. Yes, you can add your custom monster template to any note effectively, and you can then add a custom monster into that note. Um, but when I create a monster, obviously I want to reuse it. All right, I, I never really make something just for one single use case. Now, if I go through and have a look here at two dash mechanics, you might remember I said I have all my monsters in the CLI. All right, but I also have another folder called the bestiary. Now, the reason for that is the CLI tool downloads all those notes as a big package, and we don't recommend you make changes to those notes, all right? You download the notes, it links together. It's, a, it's like a package of the content you own, so you can put it into the tool and use it, but you don't change it because you might need to refresh that content at a later time, so the tool gets updated. So for that reason, I have a separate folder here called the bestiary, and the bestiary is where I put my own notes that I've made myself manually. Now you can see here, I've got some stuff that I have made um, painstakingly, might I say, uh, through cut and paste once upon a time. Um, but if I was going to come in here and actually like just make my own monster, all right, I would actually be putting it in here. All right, in this B-Series folder, I'd create a new note. <clears throat> so in here we go, new note, my monster. All right, um, and I would come down here and in my, um, my template, I was like type monster, it helps if I spell it right, uh, put in my custom monster template, all right? Now don't forget though, that in here up in the properties, what I'm gonna do is actually go stat block, all right, and in here put the inline property, okay? So that that way the initiative, sorry, the fantasy stat block plugin will scan this note and know that there's a monster. And what that means is that in the future, whatever I create here will be available in the tool in other notes, okay? Now this probably won't work, but let's just have a look and see if we can do this. My custom monster. If I take that, 
delete new node. And I'll go Alt T, uh, monster, insert monster. Instead of goblin, I'm going to put my custom monster. It probably won't work yet. No, it's not. And the reason it's not going to work is because of the passing. So if I go fantasy stat blocks, pass, all right, give it a little bit of time to do it. So fantasy stop stat blocks is starting the front matter passing. It's going to take a little bit of time to do that. Um, but then once that's actually completed, then technically it should pick up the fact that I've created my new monster and it will display this here for you. All right, so just a heads up that that's how that works. Um, you might need to, as I said, give it a bit of time for that passing to actually complete. You can see it's still going. It does take a little bit of time. Um, and sometimes I need to restart the tool um, in order for it to pick that up properly. But ultimately that is how you can create your own monsters. All right, new note, stat lock, stat lock inline in the properties and then put the custom template in here. Obviously you have a unique name for it and everything should work fine and dandy. Now, there is more things that this tool does, all right? There's gonna be a whole other video here on how to get these working with Initiative Tracker, which is this section on the right here that allows us to actually manage combat with this tool as well. But let's just stop there for now, right? That is how to use Fantasy Stat Blocks, how to get them in your notes, um, so you can obviously display them, how to get them into the tool so you can use them. Um, and hopefully some ideas on how to get your notes in quickly. Um, it's a fantastic plugin, absolutely fantastic. Um, but it's not just for 5e, D&D 5e or Pathfinder 2nd Edition, like it is fully customizable. You can make your own notes, but we'll have to do another video on that. All right, guys, let's leave it there. Hopefully that's enough to get you up and started using this plugin. Um, as always, if you have any questions, please do come along here to uh, obsidianttrpgtutorials.com where you will find links to all of my tutorials, all right? If you're brand new to the tool, come here to getting started. Have a look through the different call out buttons here because I've got little examples here on how to do the very basics of using this tool, all right? Then move on to plugin tutorials. Come down and learn your way through the different plugins that you want to use. You do not need to use all of them. Only use the ones you're interested in, all right, to make your vault do what you want it to do. Um, when you're there, come to com community supported games. Find the game that you want to play and see if there's any support for you to get started, all right, quicker. Um, templates is here if you would like to have a look at some of the cool things we do with templates. Um, but one of the biggest links you need to do is come here to community and support and jump into the Obsidian TTRPG community discord. That's where we're all hiding guys. If you've got questions on how to do things or if you need help, it's better to ask there than in a YouTube comment, right? Because a YouTube comment, you cannot paste your pictures or you can't share your screen. We can support each other easier in discord. So I recommend you jump in there. Um, if you would like a copy of my Patreon vault, then you can support me through my Patreon link. It's about the price of a coffee. Actually, I think it's half the price of a coffee now. Inflation's kicked in. Um, but, you know, what you get access to is a vault that comes with all the plugins, with all my templates, with all my layout. It doesn't come with any game content. All right, I don't publish game content. It is just the layout for you to add your own notes into and to get you a nice kickstart into using this fantastic tool. All right. Anyway, guys, outside of that, I want to wish you all guys a fantastic evening. Thanks to all my patrons. I absolutely damn love your support. Thanks to the community that is just like growing and expanding. Dave, please stop teaching people how to create atomic bombs. It's dangerous. You're going to blow something up. Anyway, guys, enjoy your day. Have a great time. And I will speak to you on the socials.